Thank you, Speaker. I rise today to speak on Bill 161. Uh, Speaker, I express concern with this bill at second reading, particularly with Schedules 4, 15, and 16, which propose changes to the Legal Aid Services Act and the Class Action Proceedings Act. And since my time is limited, I'm going to focus on these areas in my remarks today, especially since there seems to be a consensus among a number of legal experts that despite minor amendments, this bill still has serious problems in these areas. So while I'm pleased the government was willing to amend the legislation to ensure that the stated purpose of Legal Aid Ontario will still be to ensure access to justice, this was an issue I and others had raised at second reading. I am troubled that they refused to amend the legislation to continue to mandate that Legal Aid Ontario shall, and the key word is here, shall, continue to provide representation in areas such as criminal law, family law, employment law, immigration law, and mental health law. In light of the 30% cut imposed on Legal Aid in 2019, this fundamental change sets the stage for Legal Aid Ontario to justify not serving everyone who meets qualifications for legal aid. I'm disturbed that no substantive changes were made to these schedules concerning the Class Proceedings Act, which experts have suggested will significantly restrict the rights of people to seek class action justice in this province. Given the government's preoccupation with shielding itself and other large actors from legal harm, I'm unfortunately not surprised. But I am disappointed and I am worried because these schedules will limit accountability and restrict access to justice. Just think of some major cases such as class action lawsuits related to the Walkerton water scandal or the Tata blood scandal or Indigenous youth in residential schools. These changes and the way they affect um, access to justice especially affects people from marginalized communities. If the government is serious about tackling issues such as systemic racism, for example, then access to justice, especially through legal aid, must be increased, not restricted. Speaker, because of these problems with these three schedules in the bill, I will be voting against Bill 161, and I encourage the members of this legislature to also vote against Bill 161. Thank you, Speaker. Questions? The member for London West. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. I uh, uh, want to thank the member for Guelph for his remarks and uh, also wanted to ask his, uh, his opinion on the, uh, the class action provisions of the bill in light of the devastation of COVID-19 in our long-term care homes. I have heard from people in London, families who've lost loved ones to, uh, to COVID-19 in a long-term care home, that they are interested in potentially joining a class action lawsuit. What would this bill do to bring justice to those families? Thank you, Speaker. Member for Guelph to reply. I, I'm deeply concerned about the implications of this bill and previous legislation that the government passed with the Crown Liability and Proceedings Act, uh, which also restricts the ability to sue the government. So you take the two combined, we're restricting the ability of the people of this province to seek justice through class action lawsuits. And I'm thinking, particularly when it's related to COVID, I'm thinking of people as it relates to long-term care, both private and public uh, long-term care, but I'm also thinking of migrant workers as well who want to seek access to justice and may need to through a class action. As a matter of fact, the Law Commission of Ontario wrote the Premier and the Attorney General saying to reject the changes to the um, Class Action Proceedings Act because, and I quote, Bill 161 will effectively restrict class actions and access to justice in a broad range of important cases. So that's exactly what this bill proposes to do. And think of past cases such as the tainted blood scandal, the Walkerton water crisis, residential schools. Those were all class action lawsuits. And to limit the ability to do that limits access to justice. The next question. 
The member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I heard outrage from my constituents in Scarborough Rouge Park that they learned that taxpayers have to pay for legal fees for judicial officers kicked out of office for misconduct, which can include anything from fraud to sexual assault and more. My question is very clear. How can you justify to the public that Ontarian taxpayers, honest people who do their job every day and they, they keep on doing the right thing and they don't break the rules, they have to pay for judges and justices of the peace who take advantage of their power and break the rules so badly that they are kicked out of office. But other Ontarians aren't afforded that same luxury. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Back to the member for Guelph to reply. Yeah, I'm sure the member opposite did hear outrage around that. This bill, and I just want the public to know this, this bill, when it was originally proposed, had 20 schedules in it. So surely when you look at through all 20 schedules, you're going to find parts of the bill you like and support, right? Like, I would think so. I would hope so in 20 schedules. But there are three schedules that have significant flaws and that justify voting against this bill. I'm sorry, but to restrict people's access to engage in class action lawsuits restricts access to justice. That's exactly why the Law Commission of Ontario said those schedules should be removed from the bill. So if the government would like the opposition, or at least this member of the opposition, to vote in favour of some of their legislation, then I would recommend removing the schedules that are deeply problematic so we can support those schedules that do have some good elements in them. Beaches East York. Thank you, Speaker. I'd be grateful if the member could please uh, speak about how he believes um, this is going to ex this bill is going to expand access to justice for women seeking to uh, escape situations of violence and domestic abuse. Member for Guelph. So one of the reasons I appreciate the member's question. One of the reasons the concerns around class action lawsuits are so deeply problematic and troubling is that oftentimes people who may have trouble accessing justice, so I'm thinking women who may be facing domestic violence, I'm thinking people who may be facing systemic racism, one of the ways, and many people in the legal profession state this over and over again and stated it at committee, one of the ways people who are from more marginalized communities can access justice is to do it collectively because you can share the costs and it significantly then reduces legal costs and other costs to access justice. So that is one of the reasons that restricting the class action proceedings is so problematic in this bill when it comes to uh, creating access to justice for Thank people. Thank you. The member for Mississauga Centre. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Ce projet de loi. Thank you, Mr. President. This bill includes uh, amendments that will allow Legal Aid Ontario to have the tools they need to resolve their uh, justice problems quickly. Those amendments are resting on the use of lawyers and private lawyers to correct old processes. He also gives Legal Aid Ontario the power to transform services in order to give to the clients what they need. The legal aid system is outdated and it does not provide services to all those that need, need them. Why then are you opposing these changes which would provide clients with more options of how they can access legal services and by doing so allow more people to access justice? Thank you. The reply. Appreciate the member opposite's question. Um, je parle anglais. <laughs> I, um, so modernizing Legal Aid Ontario, I think it's something that's a good thing to do. But in the process of modernizing Legal Aid Ontario, to take out specific elements of what Legal Aid Ontario is providing in terms of services, 
I think it's the wrong way to go. And we've had legal experts come to committee and talked about it publicly about how that restricts access to justice. So you combine that with the 30% cut to Legal Aid Ontario in the 2019 budget, and that is restricting access to justice for our most marginalized people in many communities. I can't tell you how many people reach out to my office and need access to Legal Aid Ontario or any, and are oftentimes unable to access Legal Aid Ontario because it doesn't have the capacity to provide that access. And that's precisely why defining it in a prescriptive way is so important and ensuring that it's fully funded is so important. Thank you. One last quick question, member for Oshawa. Thank you, um, and I appreciate the opportunity to uh, bring up the families and folks in Pickering at Orchard Villa uh, long-term care uh, home. Many of them are, are hurting as they've lost 78 loved ones. They are pursuing a number of legal options. What question. will this look like for them? Response. Uh, unfortunately, it likely means if this bill passes, it'll be very difficult for those residents to seek justice. And that's one of the sad realities of this bill. Thank you.